Welcome to the Infinite Life Podcast. I'm your host, Katish Haberfield. As a spiritual regression therapist, spirit releasement therapist and medium, I help my clients to break free of karmic behaviours and limiting beliefs impacting their lives. This free podcast takes you behind the scenes in sessions with my clients as they experience regression sessions and celestial healings, as they access the wisdom of their sub and superconscious mind and witness the unfolding story of their soul. I hope this podcast provides you with inspiration and insights that can be applied to your life. Welcome back to the Infinite Life Podcast. I'm your host, Katish Haberfield. This is episode two, and today we are going to be actually working with a beautiful lady named Ruby. And you're going to hear Ruby over two episodes because her session went for almost three hours. So I have stripped it back and put it into two sessions. Now, there's not much that I want to say to you today other than Ruby's a friend of mine and I stumbled across a TikTok video that she reposted on Instagram and I watched the video and I thought to myself, I'm going to contact Ruby. And so I'm going to let you listen to that video. If you're watching this on YouTube, you can uh, watch it and then I'm going to say some more after that. Okay, so I have just been scrolling on TikTok for longer than I care to imagine. Um, but I've just learned something and it's completely like baffled my brain that some people don't have an internal monologue. So in my brain constantly there's a narrator telling me about everything that I see and that I hear, that I smell, that I taste conversations are replaying over and over again that I've had with various people there's a song playing in my head all the time like I can hear it inside my head and uh, just random things in my head and when I read when I read the words I can hear that in my head and if it's different characters they have different accents in my head but some people don't have this they just have silence what? How am I 46 and I didn't know that not everybody has an internal monologue in the head? It, but I can't, I just, I've, I don't, the words have gone. Like, this is weird to me. Like, I thought everybody heard in the head everything. Like, when you, so... <laughs> <laughs> my words are not working because I can't fathom it out so when I'm having a conversation with somebody else not when I'm talking when they're talking I'm listening to what they're saying but also I'm answering in my head certain things and then hearing in my head the what I'm going to say to them before I say it and working out if that's should I should I say that bit or should I say this bit and then I might notice a bird and then start thinking about pigeons but I'm still listening to what the conversation is but other people have nothing silence knowing the monologue my mind's blown what is this do you, can you hear a voice in your head or have you got silence I've got so many questions if you've got silence I can't comprehend what that is like. I don't, I, what? I don't know. So my hypothesis was that the reason why it was so noisy in Ruby's head was because she had spirit attachments. And why did I have that hypothesis? Well, because I used to have a lot of what Ruby was saying before I had spirits released. And I was initially profoundly impacted by how quiet it was in my mind and I don't believe in being an ambulance chaser I don't watch people's Instagram posts or Facebook posts to find what's wrong with them and then try and sell them stuff but because Ruby was a friend I just had this spare of mo the moment insight I thought I'll send her a message to see what she says you know 
uh, see if she wants to come on the podcast and test out the theory. Went to bed, woke up in the morning and thought, oh, I felt like a vomiting. I thought, oh, I've just done what I always say I hate people doing. And I'll just see if I can delete that message. And anyway, she <laughs> she came back straight away overnight because she's in the UK. I'm in Australia. And she's like, yes, let's try, try test this out. And then it took oh, a couple of months actually for us to actually find a time that would work for Ruby. And this session is the results of that. So I'll keep this introduction short because it's a very long episode, but it will blow your mind. And I'll do a longer intro in next week's episode. So thank you for listening. Take care. Namaste. And in a moment, you can recall or imagine a time in your past when you felt wonderful in or around water. It could be any moment from months, decades or years ago. It could be a swim in an ocean, a river or a lake on a recent or a childhood holiday. It could even be a shower or bath a couple of days ago. So let one specific moment, a memory that is good of being in or around water come up now. Just choose one memory and let that one memory be the right one. Bring it into focus like you're focusing through a camera lens or a telescope. And Ruby, I wonder, is that a place outdoors in nature or indoors in a home where the water is? You can speak to me. Outdoors in nature. Outdoors in nature? Okay. Now I want you to imagine you can either dip your finger or your toe in that water and let me know, is it warm or cool? Cold. Cold, okay. Now I want you to imagine that you can actually step into the scene fully, so step into that water, knowing that you are safe. Look around to see what you saw. Listen to hear what you heard. But most importantly, I want you to notice the feeling of the water on your skin. And I want you to notice the feeling within. Is it a freedom like being engulfed and floating on an ocean? Is it a cleansing warm like a shower? What does the feeling feel like of the water? Really fresh. Fresh? And tingly. Fresh and tingly, lovely. All right, so notice how you can experience the recall. Is it like a photograph or is it like a movie? Like a movie. Perfect. And notice how you can choose to play it forward like you had an old VCR and you could press fast forward or rewind. But I want you to go deeper into the feeling of the water, more and more refreshing and invigorating and allowing you can allowing yourself to let this sensation of the water so saturate through you. Refreshing, cleansing and healing. And I want you to continue to find ways you can recall and relive that more vividly in ways best for you. And as you continue to do that, we can observe what may be implied in the moment at a deeper level because we think of ourselves as solid, yet the human body is really 60% water. We think of this as planet Earth, yet the surface is really 70% ocean. We think of ourselves as our conscious mind, yet our subconscious mind is really the majority. Now you can tune into the subconscious realities of your being. A key reality of your being is your spiritual strength, your sovereignty and authority over your body, mind and spirit. Your subconscious mind can remind you of specific times you felt spiritual strength, like a feeling of deep peace or faith, a thought realizing the non-dual or ultimately loving and compassionate nature of the universe a time of connection with implicit confidence in your ability to flow with universal truth. This is a resourceful state you can connect with. It could be a directly spiritual moment of realization, like a deep peace, or it could be an indirectly spiritual moment, like a surge of unshakable, unselfish resolve to stand up for justice. I will count down from three to zero, 
and at zero you'll recall or imagine a moment of spiritual strength, like a deep peace, a righteous energy, or an authoritative clarity. So drifting back with three to a moment of spiritual strength with two, focusing with one, ready to step into that moment and feel the feeling with zero, now be there. Ruby, first impression in that moment, are you inside or outside? Outside. Outside? Is it morning, afternoon, or evening? Afternoon. Afternoon. And whereabouts are you? On a street. Okay, look around. What's happening? Um, it, somebody's putting weed colour on the floor and I'm shouting at them. Okay. And I want you to visualise, imagine, hear, feel or know in any way that's right for you. Is this a directly spiritual strength that you're feeling when you're going through this moment or is it an indirect spiritual strength? How do you uh, feel? It, it, I just no indirect. It, I, I feel angry but like I'm powerful because I'm standing up for what I think. Okay, good for you. All right, and I want you to um, – know from this moment you may play it forward a little bit more if you want to is what does spiritual strength mean for you what does spiritual strength mean for ruby resilience mm -hmm. and like i'm not alone okay and does it come from inner knowing and moments you felt in your life or does it come from, or is it connected to a role model in your life? No, it feels like it's out, out all, all over, like out of me, okay. all around me. Okay. Like a higher, like a higher power. Type a higher thing. power? Yeah, okay. All right. So what I want um, for you to do is to choose an image that symbolizes how your spiritual strength looks. Now you might see a symbol, a sign, a color, or a word. What comes to your mind? A flaming sword. Wow, okay, beautiful. Okay, now I want you to imagine that this flaming sword lives somewhere in your body. I want you to find where your strength lies in your body, your spiritual strength. Where is it? In my chest. In your chest, okay. So what I want you to do is I want you to imagine that you could, without hurting yourself, just drop it into your chest. And what we're doing is we're embedding that power of the flaming sword within you. So you can take it with you and bring this feeling of your spiritual strength whenever it's needed as we go through issues related to your spiritual strength, sovereignty and authority over your body, mind and spirit. Any time that you need to in your daily life, you can simply imagine this flaming sword and you will feel immediately confident, strong and assured of yourself. It will remind you of the moment where you dis when you discovered this spiritual strength. And now, Ruby, I want to um, let you know that in a moment you can recall or imagine a time in your past when you felt your spiritual strength and sovereignty over your body being compromised. This could be a situation where you invited other spiritual beings to communicate with you, but you felt as though your spiritual strength was compromised. So going back with three to any moment, with two and with one, knowing that you are safe and you're simply just watching yourself relive that moment. So, Ruby, what is happening? What's your first impression? What's your first memory? Being sat in front of a fire with my friend. It was a, inside the house, the house, you know, a coal fire mm -hmm. with my friend, and we was burning each other with a hot shovel in the fire mm -hmm. and it was night time and we thought it was funny okay I 
I don't I don't know why it was for me. It wasn't for me, but that's what it feels like. Okay, and how do you feel that it compromised your spiritual authority over your body? Because she, I felt like she was making me do it, and uh -huh. she. So I was Christian before, and then, uh -huh. and she wasn't, and I feel like she was. I have to do it. I don't know. Okay. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to invite your higher self to come in and to give you the higher spiritual perspective on this moment in time. I want you to um, relay to me what your higher self says to you about this moment and why it was important for you to experience. That, that was when everything changed okay. for me. Yeah. Everything shifted and it, it was like I could become somebody different. I was allowed to become somebody different. Mm -hmm. So. And I didn't. You didn't. I didn't have to follow the, the rules or anything. I could just do, I could just explore and become who I was meant to be becoming. Okay. And what does your higher self tell you now in hindsight about your friend? That she was stupid, like silly, not stupid. She was silly, just like daft. Okay, and did she mean any harm? No. Beautiful. So I just want you to imagine you can look into her eyes and just feel the original friendship there before that moment. And what do you know now? If she could talk to you, what would she say? That she loves me. Mm-hmm. And that she's glad that I'm like I am now. Mm -hmm. That's it. She won't say anything else because she's different now. She doesn't want anybody to know okay. what she was like. Okay, that's fine. So I just want you to give her a hug. And release her, allowing that memory to drift and float away, knowing that you can make friends with all of your memories and access the true wisdom from them. So your subconscious mind can be a good friend to you to t let you know the connection with the higher wisdom through your higher self at any moment. Should you relive a memory, you can bring in your higher self and ask for the clarity associated with that memory. We're just going to skip a few minutes in the session because something came up that was very private that Ruby doesn't want on the podcast, which we are completely fine with. So at the end of this next session, what we did is we got Archangel Raphael to come in and do some emotional healing for this very private part of the session. And then he was shining a torch to look at where the emotion was contained in the body from this part of the session with Ruby and that's when I felt that there was something else behind that layer of emotion and I asked her to do something else for me. I want to. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. Now Ruby uh, whilst Archangel Raphael is shining that green light there, I wanted you to check. Imagine that it's now like a, a flashlight that can look as into the area like as if it was a tunnel. 
is that area completely sealed and healed or is there something else that needs to be removed out of there? You might see it in the shape, if there is anything in the shape of a stone or a gem or some kind of a symbol or otherwise it will appear as a clean healed dressing. Like two like two little rocks either side, like a like a like a bean, like two bean type shapes. Okay. All right, so let's just focus on the first rock that you want to focus on. And what I want to know is is this a does this rock symbolize a thought, a feeling, or an emotion, or does it represent a physical being? Physical. Physical. Okay. So now I'm just going to speak to this physical being. Hello, my name is Katish, and you have been identified as existing in Ruby's neck. I come in peace and am benevolent. I'm here to witness and hear your story. So what is the first thing that you would like to tell us? Uh, this just came into my head, but it just said I'm a little man. A little man? So you have been a human being? No. No, okay. So what is the colour of the light where you come from? Green. Green, okay. And um, how is it that you know, Ruby? I found her one day. You found her? What was she doing when you found her? In the garden by a tree. Mm -hmm. And how was she feeling when you found her? Sad. She was feeling sad? Okay. And what was your intention then? To be a friend. To be a friend? Mm -hmm. And uh, how have you been a friend to her? I haven't. It was a trick. It was a trick. Okay. Good trick. Yeah, very good trick. <laughs> so uh, what have you actually been up to? Messing, messing with the mind. Oh, dear. Right. Why? It's just funny. It's funny, is it? Oh, dear. Well, um... You have broken the law of spiritual sovereignty on Earth and in the entire universe. Did you realise that? No. Yeah. Here on Earth we have strict boundaries regarding spiritual sovereignty. So what I'd like you to do is I would like you to call in the people who you live with on the green light and reconnect with them, please and request permission to leave. Oh, okay. Yeah, you'll be right. I'm just checking. You don't have you, did you just find her just because or do you have a past life with Ruby? No, the, just because. Just because. All right. Well, don't you have you have you contacted them? I should have been mm -hmm. enough time. All right yeah. then. I want you to remove any residue of thought, emotion or any kind of residue that you have deposited in her body while you have been residing in it. Okay. Goodbye. Goodbye. God bless. Take care. Is he gone now, Ruby? Yeah. Yeah. All right, darling, so I'm just going to call in Archangel Raphael to seal, heal and cleanse that particular area. And whilst he does that, I'm going to ask you to look at the second rock on the other side. It, it, it shrank now. It's gone really tiny like a, little, like a little grain of rice, like a little bead. Okay. So what do you know about it? Does it have words or feelings or emotions? No, it, it feels like it's something in my body, like, um, you know, like a, not a spot, but something like inside, like a little, 
something's maybe blocked or stuck or something. Okay, all right. So two things. Uh, I want you to ask it if it could talk, if you could imagine it could talk, what would it say? It's completely imaginary. Eat, eat. Just eat better. Eat better? Oh, that's yeah. unusual for you, I would have thought. Okay, and can we uh, take your, I want you to go back from three to one and at one you're going to be at the moment in time where this lodged itself in you. So going back with three, drifting back to two and now one, back to the moment in time where this grain of rice lodged in your body to send you a message. What's happening, Ruby? I'm at the freezer in the supermarket and they've got all new food, new vegan food in the freezer. Mm -hmm. And I want it because I've not had it for a long time. Mm -hmm. But but it's not good for me. Why is it not good for you, given that it's vegan? It's, so all, it's all made of fake stuff, okay. like fillers and it's like fake meat stuff. Yep. But it tastes nice. Uh -huh. It's a bit like the McDonald's of the vegan world. Yeah. Okay. All right. So how did your body try to send you the message? Lots of lumps. Okay. And what is what what is the belief that you have that is causing you to eat things that appear to be good for you but aren't? I'm already fat, so it doesn't matter. Okay. And where does this thought originate? From my mum. Okay. So I want you to go back into the very first moment that this thought was attached to your body, that you were fat. My mum said that I had thighs like a farmer's wife. I, when I was a girl. Why? Because I, I trundled along like a like a, an elephant. I wasn't, my sister was skinny like a ballerina and I was heavy. Okay, and when she said you had thighs like a farmer's wife, where did that thought embed in your body? In my legs okay. and my hips. Okay. So I want you to focus in on those areas and I want you to ask Archangel Raphael to send a green healing ray of light to those areas so they can be transmuted and sent back to source. knowing that your body shape is no reflection of your worthiness in life. Allowing yourself to release any emotion. And now I want you to imagine that your mother says that again, but this time you have like a force field around you. And I want you to see her saying those words and then seeing them bounce off the shield that is around you. Can you see that happening now? Yeah. Okay. So now know that any time that you feel negative energy coming from a person, whether it's an intuitive premonition that somebody's about to speak nasty words, I want you to mentally rehearse putting up a force field around you so that those words bounce back off you and are sent to source to be transmuted. We never send thoughts back to the original owner because that is reverse negative energy. We want to send it back to source to transmute. Okay. 
Okay, so another way that you can visualize this is imagine somebody's shooting an arrow at you, which is an arrow of words. You're simply catching the arrow. And instead of shooting them back with their own arrow, you're sending it to the sun to be transmuted into energy to bless the planet. Okay. All right. And now yeah. I, want, I want you to focus back in on that little grain. Is it still there? Like a little tiny dot. Okay. And are you able to pull it out yourself? Yeah. Perfect. And you can go and plant it in the ground in your mind or put it in the rubbish bin, whatever you like, or hand it over to a fairy who will make use of it. Okay. Okay. Now I just want you to check where that grain was. Is there anything behind it? No. Perfect. All right. So we'll just call upon Archangel Raphael to just cleanse, heal, and seal that area. And now, Ruby, what I want you to do is I want you to begin to imagine you could float up over your body and look at your body as though it was like a silhouette. I want you to start to do a body scan starting at the top of your head very slowly imagining you had like a metal detector like you see those funny people on the beach with a metal detector looking for dollar coins. What you're detecting is hot spots, symbols, energy, words, colours that indicate that we need to stop there. You may even hear sounds. Uh, under my left breast, okay. it's like a radiating purple, like it's like it's an epicenter and it's radiating outwards. Okay. All right, so I'm going to ask you to examine this epicenter, this radiating purple. And I want you to look at it and see, first of all, is there a thought or an emotion behind it? Anger. Anger, okay. Whose anger is it? My dad's. That's okay. Why do you have your dad's anger in your left breast? Because I cremated him and I didn't bury him. Okay, so did he leave instructions and you didn't do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. And so uh, what was your dad's name again? Greg. Greg. All right. So what I want to check right now is um, I'm going to ask Archangel Michael or Archangel Zadkiel to let us know, um, and you'll hear a message in your mind, Ruby, did your father pass to the light? Yes. Perfect. Okay. So, Greg, we'd like to call in Greg to come back in to give us a message today, please. Greg, please make yourself known. So this is like a little bit of mediumship here. Ruby, we're going to ask Greg to come back in because he's responsible for the energy that is in your body. We're going to ask him to remove it and to have a conversation with you. So you need to let me know when he, when you sense his energy and how you sense his energy. Where do you feel it around you? Yeah, I sense it and I sense it above my head. Above your head? And it, okay. Yeah, and he's annoyed because we've bothered him. Okay. Hi, Greg. It's Katish here. Um, I understand you're busy, but it's really important that we talk to you today. I think there's some unfinished business between you and Ruby that needs healing and clearing. And she's not called that. that. She's called Ruth. Ruth. Okay, darling. Ruth. We'll call, Ruby, do you mind if we call you Ruth for the moment? No, that's okay. Okay. <laughs> It's all right, darling. All right, Greg. Ruth here is harboring your anger in her breast. Now, this is a very dangerous location for females. And we know that you have supposedly crossed the light, so you should not be presenting to us as an angry being. 
is an angry spirit. What's the truth? I'm still here. You're still here. That's what I thought. Okay. All right, Greg, why are you still here? You had a rotten life. You had a rotten life? Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. What was so rotten about it, mate? My mum killed herself. Okay, that's I yeah, grew that's... up with the nuns. Mm -hmm. I was on my own. I didn't like it. Mm -hmm. All right. No one loved me. No one loved you at all. Okay, and uh, how old were you when you died, mate? 58. 58. And what happened to you? Cancer. Cancer, okay. Cancer is a nasty disease, but it springs from resentment and anger. And, mate, did you not see the light at the time of your death or what held you back? I was in hospital, stuck. Mm -hmm. Couldn't I couldn't get up there. Oh, you couldn't get up. Okay. All right. Um, and what happened? Did Ruby come to visit you? I'm sorry, Ruth come to visit you and you decided to live the rest of your life through Ruth or what was the deal? No, she didn't come. She wouldn't she come. Wouldn't come? Okay. So how did you find her again then? I went to her house. Went to her house, okay, yep. Invisible thread still tying you, yep. Okay. And uh, how have you been interacting with her ever since? Sometimes. Sometimes what? Sometimes I, I interact with her. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Thoughts in her head or you make her do stuff or what? Thoughts in her head and make her line things up like when she was a girl. Okay. And what's the purpose of that? So I'd come and visit but I didn't. And what do you get from staying around her? Not on my own. You're not on your own? Okay. All right. So what I want to tell you, my darling, is that firstly, you're never alone, even when you think you are. There are special people always around you. And secondly, there are people waiting for you on the other side. Did you know that? No. No. Okay. And thirdly, by staying around Ruth, you're draining her energy and causing physical harm to her body. As a father, I'm pretty sure that that's not your intention, is it? No. No matter what? No. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you back to the moment of your death. You won't feel it physically. You're just in spirit form now. And I'm going to take you back to that moment where you tried to go to the light. And I'm going to bring in and show you who's been waiting for you, Okay. Then all you have to do is take the hand. But before you do that, I just want you to say one last thing goodbye to Ruth. Okay? Goodbye, Carrot Top. All right, my darling. So now I want you to go back in time with three, two, one, back into the hospital bed, back to the moment where you tried to go up to the light, but you felt yourself fall down. This time, I want you to keep looking up and feeling higher and higher and lighter and lighter and brighter and brighter and you can see like a tunnel with a flashlight at the end of it and I want you to stare really hard at that flashlight and there's somebody there can you see who that somebody is Mama. your mum all right darling so your mum's been waiting for you all this time so all you have to do my sweet is to grab her hand and she's going to give you a hug and welcome you back to your spirit family. Okay. So I want you to float up to your mum, have a hug, and then jump into the light for us. You'll be safe, healed, and you will feel so much better than you ever felt to you in human life. I promise.
He jumped into the light, Rudy, or is he still hanging around? He, he's gone. He's gone. Perfect. Okay. All right, Ruby. So now I want you to do is I want you to go back and have a look at that purple swirling area underneath your left breast. It's closed it's up. It's like like a whirlpool, like down a, a plug hole. It went and then closed. Okay. All right. So we're going to call in Archangel Raphael again to put the green ray over this swirling whirlpool and to heal, seal, and cleanse, removing any, any residues of thought and emotion, any after effects of the attachment of Greg. And then Ruby, while, while he's doing that, I want you to please continue to scan your body. There's like a black shadow on my right knee, on the inner bit of it, on my kneecap, like a black, mm -hmm. like a smoke. Like a smoke? Okay. I want you to focus yeah. in on that. Is that a thought, an emotion, or a being? I feel it just thought it was physical, like it's Yeah, it's like a physical rather than right, like, almost, like I can feel it sore. Okay. All right, and let's let's have a look at it. And let's have a look at the origination of it. So taking you back in your memory to the moment in time where this smoky area began to physically appear upon your body. What is the root cause of this? I fell, I fell into a shop and landed on my knee. Mm -hmm. And why did you fall? Did somebody push you? No, my foot got stuck in my trouser leg because it was wide and, I, and like I tripped over my, my pants. Okay. Are you sure there's nothing else happening at that time? Um. I, I don't know. Um, have a look around. Have a, just have a look around. Scan the memory to scan for other energetic beings around you. Just the man in the shop. Just the counter man. Okay. And how does his energy feel towards you? Uh, he's ha he's happy and concerned that I've hurt myself. He's happy, like he's a happy man. I mean. Yeah, okay. All right. So why do you Some, still have that residue? Yeah. Sorry. I don't know. It feels like somebody else is there, but I don't know who they are. Far in the corner. Far in the corner? I can't okay. see I can't see them. Okay, all right. So I just want you to focus on that corner right now. And imagine you could imagine you had one of those thermal heat detecting shape machines. You know, the one that show you your aura or mm do body scans can you see the shape of a human being yeah okay and is this a non-physical human being i don't know it feels like it is a human being but but okay. they're hiding yeah they're hiding okay um so let's ask them to say hello hello my name is katish and you're with ruby and myself we're going back in time into her memory when you were in the shop. What's your name? Sadiq. Sadiq? Yeah, Sadiq. Sadiq, okay, Sadiq. Um, and what were you doing in the shop, mate? Hiding, working for the man, hiding. Okay. And what did you think when you saw Ruby? Frightened that she'd see me. Okay, why were you frightened? Because I'm not meant to be in this country. Oh. And 
But Ruby doesn't look like a police officer, does she? No. No. So nobody was meant to see me. Okay. All right. And um, did you send her a negative thought that made her trip, or? No, I was just frightened she'd see me. Just frightened she'd see me. Okay. And how is it that we can contact you today? Is that because you've now passed, you've died, and we're con yeah. contacting? Yeah, in the, in the boat, in the sea. You died in the sea, in the boat? Yeah. Okay, I'm sorry to hear that. And um, how, much lo how much after you met Ruby did that happen? Mm, not long, a few months. A few months, okay. And obviously you didn't go to the light? No. Okay. And are you residing in her knee? No. No. I'm just accessing you because of the memory. That's correct? Yes. Okay. All right. So, mate, are you ready to go to the light? Yes. Okay. All right. So, literally what I'm going to do is take you back to the moment when you died in the sea and I'm going to show you a very, very bright angel who's going to come and scoop you up out of the sea before you drown and take you straight up to the light. Okay, so with three, drifting back with two and one, the moment that you're in the water and now there's a huge bright white light coming out from the sky and coming to scoop you up. Do you see the angel now? Yeah. Okay, darling. So God speak, God bless, and you will disappear into the light and where your family will be waiting for you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye. All right, Ruby, let me know when he's gone. Yeah, he's gone. Yeah, felt that one. Okay, so that was why. That was to show us that he needed crossing over. So now I want you to have a look at your knee again. Yes, not, nothing there. Nothing there. Okay, so thank you for your spiritual service there, Ruby, because your body was showing you that somebody needed help. So, again, you're allowing other people's thought streams still to impact your body. So, uh, and that is an example. Let's have a look at somewhere else on your body. What else needs to be seen today? This is like a pulsing feeling on my foot halting like on, on the your side foot. on the mm -hmm. side where you you know your little toe is where mm -hmm. the bones are mm -hmm. there it's like radiating pulsating if it was okay. a color it'd be red it'd like be it. red yeah okay all right and uh is this red a thought form an emotion or a being i think a, a feeling feeling okay what, what yeah feeling? of like exhaustion like a real deep tiredness okay all right and um where does this come from ruby when did this start to appear in your body when i was 21 21 okay and take us back to that moment in time what was happening I was pregnant mm -hmm. and I was arguing with the kid's dad mm -hmm. because I'd not cleaned the house properly. Oh, okay. And I felt like that I had to do everything, like I, everything feels heavy. Mm -hmm. I already had a child and... I was pregnant and I and I was I was tired, really tired. Mm -hmm. And were you unable to express your feelings at this time? Is that why this is then internalized? What's Yeah, I'd just be shouted at or hit. Okay. All right. So what I want you to do is I want you to um give yourself a hug.
or let yourself know that we have witnessed this moment in time. We understand the deeply moving exhaustion that you have. And I want you to imagine that you have a pair of very heavy boots on. And I just want you to take them off. I want you to see you see yourself sitting in a lounge chair, comfy chair with a cup of tea without your boots on. Just allow yourself to deeply rest. And is there anything else that we need to know in this moment to move and shift that energy? I never got an apology. Mm -hmm. I apologize, but he never did. Okay. And what does your higher self wish you to know about this? Because in life, we mostly never get the apologies that we seek. I've got to just let it go and understand that some people move on and develop and other people don't. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to get something from somebody else because that's what you do yourself, but not everybody's like you. Mm -hmm. Okay. And is there any silver thread going off to a disassociated personality at this moment in time? No. Small. No. Perfect. Okay, good. All right. So now I want you to have a look at your foot again. It's like it's all dripping off into the ground. Okay. All right. So just allow it to drip off. As you rest your feet, you can put your feet up on that stool that's there. Don't mind about the fact that it's for good. Put your feet up on that stool. Now I want you to imagine that there's a nice magazine beside you and I want you to sit and read the magazine. Just having a cup of tea and reading the magazine. I know Ruby allows herself to rest when she has her moon time, but does she allow herself to rest other times? No. No. What does your higher self wish you to know about this? That you deserve rest. And what sign is your higher self going to send you the next time that you are exhausted and don't allow yourself to rest? Uh, it's like, is it called an ank? Mm -hmm. It's an addiction. Ank, yeah. Yep. It's like a roundy thing with a cross on it. Yep, I know the ink very well. Okay, so I want you to lock that into your memory. Anytime you see a picture or the word or an association with the ink, that is this time that you need to deeply rest immediately. Okay? Okay. All right. So checking back with your foot, is it still dripping? No. Okay, all right, so we'll just call in Archangel Raphael to heal and seal any emotional or physical residues that were part of that emotion. So continuing on with the scan, Ruby. That's it now. All right, so now I am going to take you back in time to when you had a newborn baby and you had your friends over. And you took out the Ouija board. I don't want you to be afraid. We're just going back in time as a visitor to view the situation so that we can help you in this situation. Drifting back with three, with two, with one. Be there now. Just want you to observe the situation, Ruby, and tell me what's happening as though you're watching it from above. 
There's a group of people. Mm-hmm. They're all drinking mm-hmm. and smoking weed. Mm-hmm. And they've made a board on the back of a book. Mm-hmm. And there's all candles lit. And there's music playing. Mm-hmm. And the other children are in bed upstairs. Mm-hmm. And the baby's in the other room, in the front room, because the mm-hmm. fire's on, mm-hmm. in the pram. Mm-hmm. And they're all being loud and noisy and laughing. But it's fun. Do you think it's fun? Mm-hmm. Sure. And what happens next? One of them, the man, mm-hmm. says that he can contact somebody Hook. His name is Hook. And they start doing the Ouija board asking questions. Mm-hmm. And this hook guy comes through and then they get frightened. Mm-hmm. And then the glass flies off the Ouija board and smashes on the fireplace. Mm-hmm. And then we can hear the pram squeaking. Mm-hmm. So Ruby and her friend Natalie go in. Mm-hmm. And, we're, and the pram's moving frantically and we, and the baby's crying, he's screaming and we're trying to hold the pram steady mm-hmm. and we're frightened mm-hmm. and everybody else leaves. Now I want you to focus um, on this hook fella as if you're observing, you know, you're just a witness, kind of like you're watching it through the telly. When you contact Hook, does his energy come into the room? Yeah. Okay, and what happens from his perspective? Imagine that you can shift to another camera. He's he's bashing against the ceiling and trying to, like he's like like a, a smoke but trapped in like a balloon. He's bashing on the ceiling and the doors and the walls like trying to escape okay and uh what happens next the door opens and he goes through the door into the other room and then he's trying to escape there as well but then he sees a baby Mm -hmm. and it's like he he's not frantic anymore it's like he's calmer Mm -hmm. but He's with the baby. Okay. And then what happens next? He squeezes the baby. Mm -hmm. He's he's squeezing it and squeezing it. Why is he doing that? He, He wants... He wants what the baby has. Which is? To to be young and to be new. To start again. To start, start, yeah. Okay. All right. And do you witness him enter the baby? No, it's like you... It's like he's disappeared behind it. Okay. All right. So what we're going to do now, Ruby, is we're going to bring in your higher self. We're going to bring in Archangel Michael. Bring in Archangel Raphael. We're going to bring in Archangel Azrael. Bring in Archangel Zadkaya. Okay, as our spiritual team. And then we are going to bring in the higher self of the baby, who shall remain nameless for the moment. And then we are going to ask the higher self of the baby whether we may have permission to interact with Hook today. So, Ruby, could you please ask your higher self to ask the baby's higher self if we have permission to speak to Hook? Yeah. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, Ruby, you can just watch for a minute and I'm going to talk to Hook. Hook will not attach to you. Hook's just going to relay a message and then you can relay it to me, okay? Okay. Okay. So, Hook, um, my name is Katish and I come in peace. I'm benevolent. I'm here to assist you. I believe that um, once upon a time you were contacted through a Ouija board. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. What's what's Hook seems a kind of a weird name to call you. What's your what's your name, darling? Peter. Peter. Okay, Peter. And Peter, how did you end up being a spirit who could be contacted by a Ouija board? Did you die and not go to the light? Mm-hmm. Okay. And what happened to you? What's your story, mate? We need oh, to hear Sword. Sword. <sighs> Okay. They killed her, the traitors. They killed me. They put a sword in me. Okay. It's all right, mate. You don't need to experience the pain again. Just It's just the memory. And how old were you when the sword went in you, Peter? 42. 42. Okay. And where were you living? On a boat. On a boat. Okay. Uh huh. Uh, hence the name Hook, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> uh, and uh, mate, why did they kill you? What What was the circumstances? Gold. Co- I had gold coins in my pouch. Gold coins in your they pouch. They robbed me. They robbed you. Okay. And it was quite the fright, wasn't it? Yeah. Um, what were you doing on the boat? Were you like a fisherman or uh, um, what kind of boat did you have? So big boat and I was a pirate. Oh, okay. You're the first pirate I've met. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> um, now, Peter, did you... Were you the captain pirate, if that's the right word? Well, that's really? not the right word. No, yeah. I, 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 I was a helper. You're a helper, okay. I used to sneak. You used to sneak? Coins. Uh-huh. Ah, uh, so the other pirates would get the treasure and you might sneak it? Yeah. Ah, uh, um, okay. And they discovered it? Yeah. Wow. Uh, they killed me. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. And did you leave any loved members behind? No, girl. Bessie. Uh, Bessie, okay. All right, but you you couldn't go to the light or you didn't want to. What was the story? A revenge. I wanted to get them. Okay. And were you successful in your revenge or not? No. No. Okay, but you've taken your revenge out on this baby in the pram, haven't you? Mm. Is that really the right person? No. No, okay. So how have you been influencing this person in the pram? Uh, I want it to be alive. Mm-hmm. <sighs> no. My anger's in him. Your anger's in him, okay. Mm. And ha- have you been directing his thoughts and his actions? Yeah, when he lets me. Okay. Thoughts. So one of the things, my sweet, is that you were robbed of your life, right? Just mm. as they robbed you, coins, you were robbed of your life. But one of the things that happens is that, remember that little beautiful lady, Essie? Bessie. Bessie, sorry, Bessie. Remember Bessie? Yeah. She's been grieving your death for eternity. I don't know how long ago you died. But until you go to the light, Bessie's heart can't heal. And that means that the Bessie of then and the Bessie of now. Because how long ago was this? 1797. 1797. So Bessie's most likely waiting for you in heaven. Did you know that? 
Oh. Mm, okay. So what would it be like for you if I could take you to Bessie and you could be with Bessie and you could have a chance at a real life again? You go back to Earth after you healing, after you've oh. had some time with Bessie and you, the two of you could potentially have a new life together. Oh, really? Yeah, really. People don't uh, tell you that, do they? No. Yeah, well, you can. And the thing is that Bessie's waiting for you. But uh, you, have, you have to agree to leave the baby. Because the, Bessie's more important than the baby, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. you're willing to find Bessie again? Yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you back to that moment where they find the gold, but you're not to feel the impact of the sword this time. Just as they go to plunge the sword in you, I want you to see a shining, beautiful light come out from the tip of the sword that is going to deflect your attention upwards and you're going to see Bessie float towards you, okay? So I'm going to take you back in time with three, with two, with one, back just before the sword penetrates. And now notice how the metal of the sword catches in the sunlight and goes straight in your eyes and your eyes go up. And there's Bessie up in the clouds. Now I want you to float up to Bessie because you are no longer in body. You're in spirit form and you can go to your darling. Beautiful. See how much she's missed you? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so just trust Bessie to carry you. Hold her hand, and I want you to go higher and higher, feeling lighter and lighter, brighter and brighter, and then the two of you can boldly step into the celestial realms and create a new future together. So God bless. Godspeed. We love you. Thank you. Thank Goodbye. You. You're welcome. All right. So Archangel Raphael, I would like you to bring the entire team to surround this baby in this pram, in this moment, and conduct a very sacred ceremony to seal, heal, and bless this special baby. We know it's not currently the time when the baby is still a baby, but we wish to remove any residues of thought, emotion, and anything that needs to be healed from this hook who inhabited the baby. We ask for your blessings and prayers for this baby. And... Ruby, I'd now like you to, while they are doing that, as a special ceremony, we can leave that ceremony and shut that door back into that room so the baby is nice and warm and toasty by the fire. The baby is surrounded in white light now and the angels are looking after the baby. And now I want you to float back up on high, observing the room and observing yourself. Was there any other negative energy or beings who came out of that Ouija board at the same time? A girl, she wasn't negative, she was so sad. A girl, she was she sad? Was chi she was Chinese and her stepdad had murdered her. Okay. And she was murdered in Preston and nobody knew that he'd done it. And uh, she, could, she was trapped. She couldn't get anywhere and she wanted somebody to, to know what had happened. Okay. And is she the reason... That Ruby knows when people. Yeah. Okay. So she's the one that's giving Ruby this information. Yeah. Okay. And what's her name? Janet. Janet. Okay. So I'm just going to talk to her now, Ruby. Okay. Okay. Hello, Janet, darling. My name is Katish, and you're with Katish and Ruby. And, uh, you're feeling very sad, aren't you, darling? 
Yes. Yes. Okay. How old were you, darling? Nineteen. Nineteen. Okay. And um, look, I know that nobody knew your story and you've been trying to help people ever since, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So um, one of the things that I want to let you to know is that I know of a way where you can have even greater effect on people. Would you like to know what that is? Yes. Well, if you come with me to cross to the light, you can become a very special spirit guide for people who are about to go into dangerous situations so that you can help them before they get into trouble. Oh. Would you like to do that? Yes. Yeah. So it's a very special kind of spirit guide, and it's a spirit guide that, well, you'll t work it out with angels, but you get given a very special task to do. And I think that that would be something nourishing for your soul, wouldn't it? Yes, I'd okay. like it. All right. So because you're going to work with the angels, I'm going to save you from going back to that moment of your death and simply bring in a beautiful, the most beautiful imagined angel that you've ever seen. So I want you to imagine that you can suddenly see this beautiful light coming. It starts off like a candlelight or a flickering flame, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and then you see this breathtakingly beautiful angel. Can you see her? Yes. Okay. She just wants to give you a hug. Will you allow her to hug you? Yes. Okay. So allow her to hug you, and while she's hugging you, you two are going to drift up and float higher and higher and higher. You'll feel lighter and lighter and lighter. You'll be brighter and brighter and brighter. And together you two are going to cross into the world of angels and dreams. And you'll receive healing and your new assignment. So God bless. Godspeed. We love you. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye, darling. Okay. Has she gone with the angel now? Yeah. Okay. And is was there any other energy that was in the room at the time? No. Okay. All right. So I want you to imagine that you are still in that room because now you've got a very special job to do, Ruby. I want you to imagine that you are like either imagine yourself as a fairy or one of your favorite creatures of the of nature. And I want you to give yourself a special potion that you use in like a wand format. And I just want you to fly around the room and sprinkle this magic substance in the air to heal, seal, and clean this space. To remove any negative energy, any residues of thought. And I want you to imagine that you can send out a little beautiful healing shoot, shooting spark that you can then land inside the heart of everybody who participated in that event that night. And the purpose of this little spark is, is it's going to dissolve and release back to source any negative emotion, fear, anxiety or worry that the participants of this session experienced in that night. So let me know when you've cleansed the room and you have sent out that healing spark. Okay, yeah. Okay, beautiful. All right, and we are finished with this moment in time now, Ruby? Okay. So I want you to drift away and float away.